Time will tell if this is actually going to record or not. So I'm hitting record let's, now. Let's let's do this. So today we're fighting against the elements. The elements being Skype because sometimes yeah. the Tumblr here can't hear me. Yes. So welcome. And to if that happens, we will start talking in sign language. But I don't know sign language. So yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a great episode of Killing Time because that's what you're watching right now. And we've started in a very strange way. I am IA, otherwise known as I as Actar. I am the man uh, who gives a thousand nicknames. And with me, as always, is the man of 322 nicknames right now. That's yes. the Count. Uh, we call him the Count JB. Or the Count JB. That's a new one. That's, that's right. The 323. 323. That's where we're at. <laughs> so today, we discussed this about 15 weeks ago, I believe. We were prescient about this today we're going to be talking about entertainment that doesn't suck because that's the key here about the show and let's talk about voltron season two did you finish voltron season two i did good it was epic and that's the end of the episode there we go that's all i can say it was I, i didn't think it could be better than season one but i actually i liked it better yeah, so season one is great because they introduce the whole mythos. They go, here's Voltron, and here's this. They redefine everything in a very smart way. Because when you're talking about pilots who are piloting giant robot lions that turn into this giant mega robot that fight bad guys, that sounds a little silly. I mean, when I say it out loud, it sounds a bit silly. But in the reimagining Legendary Defender, Netflix killed it. Or at least Netflix has an awesome television show. But season two... They actually have what is unusual about a lot of television shows. The protagonists have a mission that lasts the whole season. It's like, how often does that happen in a show where it's like super heroics, where there's actually a build towards something? And that's, mm-hmm. that's what this, this whole season was about. If, if you haven't seen it and you like Voltron Season 2, beware, there will be spoilers um, in some respects. Actually, no, we're going to spoil the show. So if you yeah. haven't watched it, pause the show, go watch it, come back. See if you agree with us, disagree with us, and let us know in the comments. So let's use that thing for once. Anyway. I'd say what I really like and what I liked season one, continued in season two, is they're real characters. They're not just cartoon peoples that are one-dimensional. You know, they're actual characters. Everybody. Yeah, even, even the comic relief, the, uh, Hunk actually has a heart. Hunk. Everybody's yeah. got a heart on the show, which is actually very important. Even the bad guys have a bit of heart to them. Yeah. Everyone's got, a, everyone's got a goal, everybody's got a motivation, and it all fits, which is kind of strange because it, in some respects it actually reminds me of like really old Marvel comic books where you would look into the minds of people who are watching Peter Parker and they're like, oh, well, there's Peter. I'm sure nothing exciting happens to him. Because right, right. in some of the l- lighter episodes, there's an episode where they end up at a mall because they're looking <laughs> for some, some lenses, and there is this mall cop who swears allegiance to Zarkon, the big bad, and he's just a mall cop. And so they rev him up, and like it looks like he's going to peel out on a motorcycle, and it's a little tiny scooter. You know, the standard mall cop jokes. And he's somewhat, he's not entirely inept, but he thinks he's a big deal. And so there was a lot of that fun kind of things going on with that, those characters. And the whole arc is, the Voltron team has decided they're going to take out Zarkon. They're not going to wait. They're not going to keep waiting for this guy to come and attack them. The idea is, we're going to go kill him. Like, that's not going to work. So that actually has the team going from planet to planet, making more and more allies, and it seems like they're going to use all those allies. That's what I thought they were going to do. And they were going to, like, converge, which they don't do, because it's too dangerous, I guess. So what did you think about the conclusion of this show? I don't want to ruin that for anybody, but I was surprised, pleasantly surprised, and... I don't know. I'm trying to say, I really liked it, but I didn't see it coming. Okay. So because you're saying that, that means I can't spoil it. So I won't spoil it either. So this is going to be a very short section of the show then, because this was going to take about an episode. We were going to use the real time episode. You were going to be able to watch every episode while we're talking, but now you can't do that. Now we're just going to do about five minutes for this stuff. So uh, Voltron ends on a really interesting note. It seems like they're shifting the course of the show. And it, it ends with this idea that you want to go, we're season three. I want exactly. to watch season three. Exactly. Yes. You, you can't You do want to this. watch season three immediately. And it's a hard fought battle. There's a lot of, there's actually a bit of twists. Some of them might mm-hmm. be a little predictable, for a ch- but it's essentially a children's show. So the predictability elements, while, uh, well, foreseeable, 
were still kind of good. They made sense mm-hmm. in the story. So you weren't like, well, that was that was really predictable and that was stupid. You're like, well, that was predictable, but it made sense for the story. It made a lot of mm-hmm. sense. There's a lot of logic in this show. Another thing, th- there's there's this weird reverence to the characters as if they matter. And you mm-hmm. care about these characters because they each have oh. their own motivations and they also have, they're not all good and they're not all bad. So right. you have these things and like, Zarkon seems to actually... He, I don't think I've ever seen this much Zarkon character development in any of the Voltron stuff before. Have you? Right. He was just always a bad guy. The bad guy. One-dimensional. You know, he, he one-dimensional, bad guy, evil. You never saw his motivation. He was just bad. Okay, the one thing I will... Okay, I'm going to spoil a tiny thing. A tiny Go. thing is just when, when there's a call for Prince Lotor at the very end. And my jaw drops... And Liz is uh-huh. watching with me, and Aldrin's watching with my son and my girlfriend watching. Names just the other way around. And they're like, they stare at me like, what was that? I'm like, Lotor! Lotor! Lotor's coming! Think- they're like, who is yeah. it? I'm like, he's kind of been the, he's kind of the star scream in the universe yes. of Voltron. He's the second in command. A little whinier. I don't expect yeah. him to be whinier in this one. Maybe he's a little fun, but I'm expecting like a Kylo Ren style, uh, immature, extremely emotional, and just deadly focused i'm really hoping for that but that's season three and i don't even know when that's coming out so right great job to i forget, i don't even know the animation i think it's dreamworks right dreamworks does it. dreamworks this? dreamworks does it yep it's holy DreamWorks. crap they kill it it's a yep. great show voltron yep. if, if you liked the original show you're really gonna like this if you didn't like the original show you might actually like this you might actually still like this i mean this is and it you know we're in our 30s and we like the show so obviously they're doing something right, and I know a lot of their viewership is older viewers. And on top, of, Voltron. on top of that, if you want to get geared up for Power Rangers, essentially that's coming out March twenty fourth of well of this year. So if now I'm going, I know I'm going to have this huge comparison because if Voltron does it better than Power Rangers does in the movie, that's going to be a shame. If they're equal, it'd be really nice because the way the Power Rangers movie looks, it looks like it's going to be quite serious. But yeah. will the characters have the dimensionality? Will they have uh, mm-hmm. actual motivations? Or are there just going to be a bunch of kids who are just doing right. some stuff? So we'll see that. I'm excited for the next season of Ultron. Uh, I don't... Have you seen the, the trailer for uh, Stranger Things 2? Yes, season two? I saw it at the Super Bowl yeah, uh, yesterday. I did not see it. How yes. was it? Uh, they didn't give anything away. And, you know, they played the music. They showed a couple of scenes you know with the kids dressed up as ghostbusters probably for halloween mm-hmm. um there was an ego uh classic ego commercial which is really cool because you know uh, 11 likes the egos and then we hear um them yelling 11's name and then it says coming halloween so i received five messages from my son who wasn't with me during the super bowl four were voice messages and one was stranger things too dad and so, or help me find Stranger Things 2, because he was under the impression that the show was out right now, and it's uh-huh. not going to be out until Halloween of this year, so we've got a long way to go before Did he watch up. Stranger Things 1? Yes, he did. Really? And he was... Well, he likes, he likes, yeah, he watches things with lots of blood and fighting and things like that. Well, yeah, the weird scary. thing is, I was just thinking the other day, has he seen a lot, a lot of horror movies, because I wanted to see The Bye Bye Man, which I haven't yeah. seen. But then, like, that might be too horrific. And then I completely forget that Stranger Things is a horror show. Oh, yeah. It's, it's fairly scary. And he, he rode that out. But then again, he was quite scared at the time. Certain times, my son is six and a half, so you can see that maybe it's the kind of show that could give him nightmares or couldn't. But he's very excited about Str- Stranger Things Season 2, as am I. I, I. I don't even need to see the trailer because they sold me already with one. So oh, yeah. if they can keep that going, same thing. Again, another one, one of the shows with heart. Big fan of those things. Yep. Anyway, anything else you've watched, read, listened to, or just created? I don't know. Created? I haven't created much. I watched the Super Bowl, which was, I know we don't talk sports, but that was entertaining. Yes, if you missed it, (laughs) I don't know how you did. I actually did. Okay, so I was kind of bored in the first half. We put... put, You stopped watching, right? No, I didn't. I put the Super Bowl on an iPad, and I put a movie on the big screen, because I was just like, all right, Uh whatever. And then... Uh, then we moved to, to watch a movie somewhere else, and then I kept asking Alexa, what's the score? And then the score kept getting closer and closer. I'm like, that seems strange. 26-28, 28-28. And then I hear Patriots win, and I'm like, wait. So I did stop watching, and so I'm like, the Patriots win. And I'm like, 
wait a minute. Was, that must have been overtime. Has there been an overtime game in the Super Bowl? The answer is no. Until nope. uh, until Sunday, February fifth. That was the first yeah. time in Super Bowl Fifty One where there was a an overtime. And also, if you're an Atlanta Falcons fan, boy, do I feel bad. I am sorry. That was brutal. Because I believe in the first half it was like twenty eight to three or something. Twenty eight to three was yeah right right in the third quarter it was twenty eight to three. Yeah. So it was a it was it looked like the Falcons were cruising. So for entertaining yeah. television, the first three quarters, at least the first, I guess, two and a half quarters, not terribly entertaining unless you just wanted to see the Patriots get blown out. Like, ha, look right. at that. They, they deserve that. Then you're like, wait a minute. Okay, this, is, this lead is, is dwindling and dwindling and dwindling, and then there's this amazing catch, which is great drama. Which oh, I watched. man, that was insane. This replay two or three times. The first time I watched it in full, in full speed, I thought, that bounced off the ground. No, it bounced off his hand. It's an amazing thing. And because this is killing time and we spared no expense, we cannot show you any clips of this because we don't want to get sued. Just imagine. No. Not, not by the NFL. Too powerful. Yeah. And there was also added entertainment factor was uh, just how bad the commissioner got booed when he was giving the trophy <laughs> to the owner of the Patriots. Yeah, I heard about this. Uh, it was figure, bad. Go figure. Uh, not ex- Roger Goodell, not exactly the most uh, popular fellow to Patriots fans, considering they he benched Tom Brady. At least he, yeah. I thought he tried to do that last year too. So yeah, at this just, point he's not not just Patriots fans. It's pretty much most NFL fans because of the things he's done with other teams and suspensions and things like that too. What a guy! Anyway, yeah, great guy. We're not our, our, we don't review Roger Goodell. He's not entertainment so to, uh, per se. No. Anyway, no. so I am listening to yet another audio book. Oh, what are we listening to this week? This week, I've been listening to... Actually, this week, I'm not listening to because I haven't bothered this week. Last week, I listened to The Dorito Effect, a book by an author I forget, but it'll be on screen right now. So The Dorito Effect is about the changing uh, tastes of food. And The Dorito Effect specifically is about this guy who brought these corn chips over to the chip maker. And they're like, well, these are okay. And Dorito means little bit of gold. Because Dorado and Dorito. See, I didn't know that. Little gold, yeah. Little gold. Little pieces of gold. The guy yeah. says, can you make it, bring that back and just make it taste like a taco. And so the guy's like, wait, these are chips. But you want me to make it taste like a thing, like a whole thing. So they engineer the idea of taco seasoning or taco flavored chips. Because that's what Doritos are supposed to taste like. I didn't know that, by the way. But now, now, I that, think you about say it. That, I, now that you say that, I see it. That's what it is. Yeah. Taco flavored. So that's meat, cheese, tomato, and corn on a chip. And so, no this, kidding. so the idea is, well, that's not actually what's in it, but that's the idea of the taste you're supposed yeah, to that's what, Yeah, that's what the taste they're going for. Which is weird if you think about the Taco Bell Dorito taco. But anyway, the whole book is about the changing and, uh, of, of these foods, the genetic modification of things, uh, the farming of, of animals, the farming of of produce and how different it's been between now and then really good book the huge downside and why i've been kind of slowed on it right now the narrator might be one of the most smug narrations i've heard now maybe it's because the way the book is written maybe he's emphasizing certain things but it's so smug at times that i'm just like I don't know if I can keep listening because it's just grating. Uh-huh. The one true workaround that I found is if I can modify the speed, it's not so bad. That is only available on the iOS version of Scribed. I can't do it on the web version. I can't do it on my Android phone, which leaves me on only my iPad or just dredging up my iPhone from just sits, that sits around and does nothing. So that's actually what stopped me from reading this book. And I've invested about five or six hours into this eight-hour book. So I'm getting there. And I'm going to finish this book this month. And it's a, again, it's a really good book. And then, yes, I can switch to the, the regular ebook version if I wanted to. Yeah, I was going to say, so maybe this is one you don't listen to, you actually read. That's true. But right now, I'm actually reading another book called How to Be a Gentleman. Much easier book, much lighter fare, because I don't always like to have two serious books at one time. So mm-hmm. I like to listen to one book when I'm stuck on the subway. I like to read another book if I have the elbow room to do that. So it's just kind of this way I yeah. interact with the two books I'm listening to or reading at any given time. Because right now, that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm reading two things at one time. So maybe I can read this other book. But I'm just saying, if you want the audio version of The Dorito Effect, Listen to the sample. The sample, I believe, on Scribe was about 
44 minutes, so you get a long sample of this guy's voice, and he's not as snotty as you think in the first 44 minutes, but it gets <laughs> worse. After that, it's back. It feels worse, maybe because you hear it enough times, you're like, <sighs> maybe it's the tone of the book, because it's like, oh, I can't even give an example, because it just, it just grates so much in my brain, so that, that's gone now, I haven't listened to it in a while. So it's a great book, I'm going to finish it probably by the next time we record, because now I got to, I've got to do mm-hmm. this, and so I can give it a proper review. But it's another fascinating tale on just the changing of food and what goes on there. Because if you care about that kind of stuff, you yeah, might be interested. Like if you eat, you might want to listen to the book. Or and hopefully it. everybody does eat, so else they're not going to be around very long. Yeah, I know. I'm also one of those people that you know has soylent or ample or other foods. These these modified things to be. I'll ingest this because it's calories and it's nutrition ish. But whatever, not nutritious, but nutrition ish. Nutrition, <laughs> nutrition-ish. Yes, it has nutrition-ish. That's what I'm Ish, saying. Kind of. I want to know more about long-term things and, and, and testing of these items mm-hmm. because I don't know what happens if you continuously ingest this stuff. Anyway, that's all I've like, actually gotten to read. And, and uh, I tell you, How to Be a Gentleman, I haven't finished that yet. It's about 20, 30 pages left. Really easy to read. If you're curious about things like, hey, am I supposed to mention if a guy's fly is down if I notice it? Yes. Yes, you are. If you're a gentleman, Absolutely. you say it. And if somebody notices about you, you quickly zip up right then and there. No apology necessary. I didn't know you didn't have to apologize. <laughs> also, Fight Club. You know how there's that age-old question, which do I show you, the ass or, or, or my balls when you go past somebody? I think that's yeah. what he says. Or crotch. Yeah. He says crotch. Excuse me. Crotch. Crotch or, yeah. crotch or ass. And apparently, crotch is the way to go. No kidding. Because you're facing the person. So it's all these little rules... And like how to throw a dinner party, how to, how to be at a dinner party, what to do when you introduce people, how to, hand, like how to do a proper handshake. It's these little, again, very digestible chapters. It's like 239 pages. Very, very quick read. The margins are ridiculously big too. So, geez, <laughs> so like, it's just like you go through two, ch- two chapters in about 20 minutes. You're like, oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. And these are little things that you didn't know. So again, mm-hmm. a totally different s- side of me because I'm like, what am I eating? What does this mean? And like, wait, so I w- I'm supposed to introduce the older person to the younger person or the other way around? No, it goes, Mr. Jones, this is Jimmy versus going, Jimmy, this is Mr. Jones. So I didn't know that either. Apparently, there's an order to these things. Yes, there's so, many, many rules. It's like manners. Etiquette is a strange thing. So that's what I've, I've been reading. A, another fun thing. Again, not brought to you by Scribed, but we should be because I'm using that yes. service like crazy. Yes. Any other things before we just disappear and get the fun out of here? <laughs> get the fun out of here. I think we're good. Let's get the fun out of here. <laughs> okay. Just stop. Just stopping it there. 